Hello YouTube, in today's video we're going to be covering an updated controller settings video with the release of Warzone Season 2 last night. In the video I'm going to be going over the best controller settings for aim and also how to improve your movement so you can be breaking cameras for fun. But before we get into the settings video I just want to let you guys know there's no one size fits all when it comes to controller settings. And it doesn't mean that you have to copy everything I'm about to show you because everyone has their own personal preferences when it comes to things like plating, sensitivity and button layout for example. But hopefully you can take something from today's video to make us all a little bit more of a demon inside of Warzone. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. So before we get started guys, I'm I'm using the PS5 DualSense Edge controller with two paddles on the back. It's got, um, I use slide and I use jump for my paddles, okay? Also on this controller, I'm using um, a control freak and I'm using precision rings. If you want us to go into detail with that, I can make another video if you'd like to go into more detail as to why I use these two things. But without further ado guys, let's get straight into the settings. So straight away, I'm using, um, I don't use bumper pings, you know, ping targets and stuff. I use the up, down, uh, left, right on my left stick. Um, I don't flip L1 and R1 to shoot. I use L2 and R2, but the only reason that is is because I have almost digital tap triggers. If you don't know what digital tap digital tap triggers are, it's essentially where I take a mouse click instead of having to like depress the button in. I've actually got a setting here. There's three different clicks. I've obviously got on the lowest one, so it's the least amount of travel, so I can aim and shoot as quick as possible. If you don't have that in your controllers, guys, I'd recommend you do flip to L1 R1 because, as you can see, the buttons have a lot less travel on them. And that, again, is for a PlayStation controller. If you're on Xbox, I'm not entirely sure what they're like. But if you're definitely on PlayStation controllers I would, and you don't have that feature in a scuff or you don't have, like, a, a, an Elite controller, then I'd flip to L1 R1. Um, as for the stick layout, I use I use default. Everything's as it comes out the box. Um, and I turn controller vibration off. I don't know if you guys play with it, but I'd recommend turn it off because it's just an annoyance when you're playing the game, having all the vibrations going on. As for dead zones, guys, I have my left stick minimum on zero, which is the one you use to move your, your guy forward, left and right and back. The reason I have this is because the uh, the rotational aim assist inside of Call of Duty is very overpowered this year. If you don't know what that is, it basically means when you're moving your guy left to right, you actually get automatic aim assist on an enemy. So if I have my left stick input on zero, I'll get a little bit of stick drift, which is normally bad. But in this instance, it's almost like a cheat code to get constant aim assist on somebody. So that's why I put mine on to zero. The left stick max I have on 60. And again, the right stick I have on five. So this, I don't want to have stick drift on. So I've moved it as, as close to getting stick drift as possible. So what I'd recommend you do is go to zero. You probably will get stick drift if, it, if it's a, an older controller. And then keep going up in one increment until it stops getting stick drift. And that's probably the ideal situation. I know some pro players are actually using it. So they have a little bit of um, a little bit of stick drift on that as well. It depends what your preference is. But on the most part, you want it as close to, but not getting stick drift as possible. Um, as for the right stick max, I have it up to 100. Okay, guys, so moving on to the aiming portion of the video this is probably the most personal preference part of the video and if you were listening to the intro this is the part where i mean this is entirely up to you what you guys use no content creator no professional player can tell you what sensitivity that you should be running it's entirely personal and how you feel with the game now the only thing that i will say is anything below probably a 6-6 or a 5-5 sensitivity you want to stay away from because it's going to be too slow for you to ping onto different enemies if you want to be good at the game However, anything above there, within 6.6 6, all the way to 2020, whatever works for you is whatever works for you. I personally use 8.8, 8, and I would also recommend that you have the same horizontal and vertical sensitivity. It just makes it so much easier and a lot more symmetrical, if you like, to, to, to aim at people and more consistent, in my opinion. I also have the ADS multipliers down a little bit, so I can have my sensitivity up a little bit, so I can, I can ping different enemies and, and, and lock onto people, but also that I have it down when I'm ADS'd a little bit, so it slows down so I get more finite aiming when I'm ADS on people. But again, guys, the one most important thing about this sentence video is that the aim is the most important part of Call of Duty. You can have the best movement in the world and you can break cameras for fun. But if you're not hitting those shots, you're not going to be a good Call of Duty player. So remember, get your aim sorted before you get anything else, okay? My advice, if you want to change it up, if you want if you want to become a good player and you want to figure out what the best sort of aim is for you, you either start down with like a lower sensitivity, something more generic, like a 6677, and try and learn that. But if you want to get like a, um, a quicker movement or uh, just a quicker sentence overall, I'd recommend bumping your sensitivity all the way up to 2020 and then going down in increments until you find something that um, you're comfortable with. The reason you do it that way around is what I feel like when you go to 2020 and you're out of control, going down over is going to make you feel like you're more in control because it's getting less and less, not more and more. So I'd, if you are going to change your sensitivity, I'd go down over rather than up over. As for the sensitivity multiplier, guys, I don't use that whatsoever. They're all on one. Um, vertical aim axis, same thing. I've got it all on standard. Now, uh, the aim response type, I use dynamic. Again, that's personal preference for me. 
Uh, as it says here, it's ideal for more experienced players. F uh, fast start and movement that slows down with aiming rate, reverse S curve mapping. What that basically means is, is you can move super quick between enemies, but once you get near an enemy, it slows down just enough so you can have good aim. This is definitely pr preferable for people that are like um, seasoned Call of Duty players. If you are new out of the game, I'd probably re recommend that you use standard. But again, guys, Give a go what you want to try, and if you're on linear, for example, and you're always, you've always been on that and it feels comfortable for you, then keep using it. There's nothing wrong with trying something different, but whatever works for you, works for you. ADS sense multiplier, again, I have that on one, I don't touch that. Um, the transitioning, I have it on instant, it basically means from when you're, you're standing to ADS, does it gradually change the ADS zoom, or does it do it instantly? I have it on instant, that's, again, personal preference, but I would recommend that you guys would do the same. Again, this is another one that um, some people use, um, it's, it's a custom sensitivity per zoom, so a 2 to 3x, a 5x, a 10x they can all have different ads multipliers i have mine off i have it on the the 0.9 one that you've seen before and i leave everything at that but if you want a quick scope or anything like that you can go in here and set one specifically for quick scope and that's quicker slower whatever you feel like. So next is target aim assist. Obviously, this is just aim assist in general, the thing that keyboard and mouse players absolutely detest. You need this on, guys. This is what makes your aim really, really good. If you don't use aim assist, then you're at a disadvantage straight away. Again, on, on ADS type, again, on aim assist type, guys, I use default. I like to use default. I don't want to, like, play with my settings as, as, as much as I physically can. I think Black Ops is pretty good on this game, though. But again, guys, if you're using any one of those four and it feels better than another one that I'm recommending, just use what you know what, what's best for you. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, Give them a try guys but if you're on default that's probably what i would recommend but again if you're on black ops focused or precision if that's what works for you that's what works for you third person ads correction type i have that on assist motion sensor i have that off i don't even know what it does to be honest with you guys and then that last one again motion sensor advanced settings it's, it's part of the other one which i have off anyway okay guys so moving on to my gameplay stuff straight away i have automatic tactical sprint on that basically means when you move your left analog stick forward you're instantly going with attack sprint when your guy has the gun in the air I'd recommend for movement that that's probably the most important setting. Instead of having to click it every time, you just instantly push it forward. It might take some getting used to, but it's definitely worth it overall. Slide maintain sprint, I have that on. What I found was if I have that off, I got a lot of dead slides. If you don't know what a dead slide is, it's basically where you're in a tax sprint and you go to slide across the map. But instead of sliding, your guy crouches. It's a weird timing thing. So obviously after you crouch, you're not then sliding. And then you might have pressed jump to cancel the slide cancel. You end up lying down, you end up jumping. So I find that having that on really helps, but it, it's, it basically means as well when it's on is when you slide, when it's finished, your guy goes straight back in it with attack sprint, which is exactly what you want. Auto move forward, I personally have that off. I like, so the, the main thing with the settings going down here, if I have it off, is basically I want to be in control as much as physically possible of my own movement. So if the game can like help it in any way, I try and take that off because that takes away from, that, that creates scenarios in my head where the game's going to stitch you, basically, which I don't want to happen. Tactical sprint behavior. I have it on double tap, but it doesn't actually matter because I'm on auto attack sprint. And this is really a, a, a setting that people use. Grounded mantle. It means that when you get near obstacles that are at a certain height, which is obviously low in this case, that it'll automatically mantle you over them when you press jump. I, I try and I keep that off. Again, it's one of them situations where you'll be doing something else and then you'll you'll end up mantling when you don't want to because the game has got that setting on. So I'll keep it off as much as possible. So I'm in control of all the inputs that I'm putting into the game. Same with the airborne mantle uh, and same with the, the hang mantle. As for slide dive behavior, this is again, this is quite very like, personal to people. They have added in the new season two update a hybrid, which we'll go through in a minute, but you've got tap to slide, which prioritizes, prioritizes a tap to slide, a long press to dive. You have tap to dive, which prioritizes tap to dive, long press to slide. You then have slide only, you then have dive only, and then you have hybrid. I would recommend for movement people out here is to use slide only. This is the only setting. It, it cancels the dolphin dive. That's the trade-off. You can't end dolphin dive. But what happens is it stops the, um, the delay going into the animation. So what normally happens is when you're pressing circle on controller or B or whatever you're using, when you're pressing that button, there's a delay because the game has to work out whether you're going to slide or going to dive. So you actually get an input delay going into the movement, which is bad in my opinion. So having it on slide only, every time you press or long press circle, it's always going to be a slide. So there's no delay whatsoever. It's an instant tap and you're sliding. So if you're wanting to break cameras, guys, and you want to be on skates around the map, I'd absolutely recommend having it on this. Like I say, though, with the introduction of um, Season 2, they've brought in a hybrid, uh, a hybrid movement. So tap only to slide, which is slide only. So you don't get the you don't get the delay. But if you tap sprint the, the the L3 whilst you're sprinting and then press circle, you will do a dolphin dive. So there's an extra button to press and it takes some getting used to. I'm not that bothered about dolphin diving, so I don't use it. But if you know that you want a dolphin dive, this is a perfect, like it says, hybrid in between the two where you don't get a delay with the slide 
and you still get to dolphin dive and it, it doesn't happen by mistake there's no delays or anything like that so it's a, it's a perfect situation in that sense plunging underwater i have it on trigger which is basically you sprint forward so you move your analog stick forward and then look down which makes you dive into the water which i think is the easiest way to do it as for the parachute if you've got parachute uh, automatic parachute on turn it off when you're landing in you want to get as close to the ground as possible before pulling your chute because what that means is you're on a free dive, which makes it harder for you to hit. When you've got the automatic parachute on, you actually pull your parachute way higher. And what happens is good players like myself can just beam you out the sky. So it's better to have it off, get as low to the floor as possible. You will break your legs loads. I've, I've done it a thousand times. I still do it. You, but you want to get as close. You want to get like down to a, like a, a fine art where you can get as close to the floor as possible without breaking your legs. That is the art of that. But definitely turn it off, guys, and give it a try. Uh, a try. Next, we've got uh, sprint and door bash. That basically means when you're on a full tax sprint and you run into a door, you don't have to interact with it to open it. You'll just bash it straight open. Again, the fluidity of the game and for movement and just moving around the map, you want to have that on. So when you're moving around, if you run away from danger, you just have to smash through a door when you're sprinting and not have to think about it. So definitely keep that on. The ledge behavior I have on mantle only. Uh, pressing the mantle and button while hanging from a ledge will climb up. That's basically the standard one, and it's shit either way. It's not the great, it's not the best setting as we know when you're hanging off stuff and then doing a thousand pull-ups. There's nothing really to do to like counteract it, but I have mine on mantle only. So combat behaviors, aim down sight behavior, I have on hold. I know you can toggle it, but I think the best way to do it is to hold L2 or whatever the button is to, to aim down sight and then release it when you want to not ADS. That seems to be the easiest and most cons consistent way to do it. Um, and that's what I'd recommend for that. Yeah, so change zoom activation. That's basically when you've got two different zooms on your weapons. You might have a long sight and a short sight. This basically means what you're tapping, which is in my case L3, to, to switch between the two, which is the standard one, which you'll all have. So you'll press your left trigger down and it'll swap each one. And then for your melee, you'll have it on R3 most likely, unless you've changed that to slide, or it'll be circle if you swapped it, I'm guessing. But it's basically just a tap to, to R3 to melee. Equipment behavior, I have that on hold, which is basically when you get a grenade, you press and hold R2. Or whatever the button is you hold it and then you release it when you want to throw it so you can cuckoo grenade and things like that i'd have that on hold personally uh, weapon mount and activation it basically is ads so i ads up, up to a service and then i press the melee button and that puts us on the on the the, the mantle on a ledge and uh, again it's the best way of doing it i have it on medium but um for the exit delay you know how, how much you've got to move your controller before it comes off it i have it on medium it's the standard one and it seems to work for me absolutely fine so with interact reload behavior you want that on prioritize interact that means you can interact with like loot items and things on the floor and people's ammo weapons things like that on the floor by instantly tapping square whatever button it is that you use without having to hold it which makes it so much slower but then what that does mean is if you're in amongst loads of loot you've got to press and hold square or whatever that button is to, to reload which is easier and more consistent if you're pressing and holding to reload and you're tapping to pick everything else up it's much much quicker now again this is another one that's a kind of personal preference armor plate behavior i personally have that on apply all i just like to have one less thing to do when i'm in a gunfight i'm thinking about my movement and things of what i want to do all i need to do is press and hold triangle one start the plate animation and that's me done if i want to cancel it quickly i'll just quickly tap tri triangle in my case and that'll cancel it all together obviously the other the other option is apply one which is one plate at a time you press triangle again you press triangle again for me that's just too much going on at once but some people prefer that but again it's one of the things have a play around in the game guys and see how you feel and see what reacts best to your your play style again backpack control is directional buttons that's down button for me which is what everyone basically uses anyway depleted ammo switch that's basically when you run out of ammo on one weapon it'll automatically swap to your next weapon i'll leave that on hopefully that'll never happen really but if it does then it automatically does it for you which is it's a it's a, it's a quicker way of doing it you know quick c4 detonation that's basically when you double tap square when you want to blow it up it doesn't really matter yeah so this setting's a bit of a new one i don't think this has been in previous cards but it's manual fire behavior so that's with single tap weapons you can set it to single press which is what the standard is or you can change it to hold which is press and hold and it basically does the single tap for you instead of having to press each time and it's, it's mainly for people with a disability i know at the start of the game people were mentioning using this as a bit of a cheat code but i think they've made it so there is a bit more of a delay and it's probably quicker just to get your, your trigger finger quicker than using the hold setting but again guys i don't really use that i like pressing each time i've got a quick trigger finger but give that a try and see what you think a kimbo behavior i have that independent that means when i've got one on my right hand one on my left i'll press my right trigger which will shoot the right only and the left which is the left only you can change that to where you just shoot the button and um, press the shoot button and it does both at the same time but again again it's preference for you guys i prefer doing one at a time yeah guys for the other settings they're really just pointless set, pointless stuff i mean have a look through yourself but it's not something that i've even had a look at myself to be honest with you and um, but that's basically what the settings are going to be for today's video so that's going to wrap today's video up guys i hope you have enjoyed it 
Um, I hope I've spent enough time on the more important settings that you want to change, want to fiddle with, or maybe want to have a little play with in game and see how you feel. And other ones that I've just went straight over because they're not that important in the game. And don't forget, guys, that the one main thing I want you to take away from this video is you can't get good movement or good gameplay skills if you haven't got good aim. But with that, guys, don't let anybody tell you that there is an OP setting for a certain sensitivity, a certain ADS type, a certain aim assist type. Use whatever you feel most comfortable with and you'll be the best player for you. Just remember that and going forward. But anyway, guys, I hope this video has been helpful to you. And if it has, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And don't forget, guys, I am live right here on YouTube every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, playing Call of Duty Warzone, dropping high kill games, and giving you guys tips and tricks to make you a better Call of Duty player overall. With that being said, guys, enjoy the rest of your days, and I'll see you in the next one.